Calling all detectives. I've run into all kinds of trouble in my day, but a ghost on skis was something new. That is the situation on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. A private detective like me, Jerry Browning, expects to run into someone ready to take him over the jumps. The ski jump, viewed from the road that led to Mast Mountain Inn, was both towering and terrifying. John Madden, my host and client, edged closer to me in the sleigh. There she is, Browning. Beauty, eh? Yeah. But Madden, I'm no skier. No need to be, my boy. All you have to do is find out what's behind these pesky disturbances at Mast Mountain. All right. Let's get down to cases. What are the disturbances? Haunts, Mr. Browning. Ghosts. Things disappear. Guests see spooks, or think they do. Makes them mighty nervous. When guests are nervous, they leave. You know, I bought this place, got the whole mountain for a song, on account of the natives hereabouts believe in that fool nonsense of haunts. I get it. You like the legend when it helped you buy cheap. Right. Now it's backfiring on me. Well, here we are, Masked Mountain Inn. We pulled up at the inn. I met Hans Werten, the Swiss skiing instructor, George Stark, the room clerk, and Cortez, the platinum blonde trained nurse. Gives us a feeling of confidence having a nurse on staff. Skiers expect accidents, and we're ready for them. Now let me introduce you to the guests. I met the guests, all five of them. Mr. and Mrs. McIntyre, the two Hancock boys who were on vacation from Dartmouth University, and Tom Justin, the society sportsman. Five people rattling around in a hotel built to accommodate a hundred. I don't mind. The bar's never crowded, the ski runs are clear, and the competition's not so keen. Get me? I got him. Especially the way his eyes followed the trim figure of Nurse Cortez. But I'm glad you're here, fellow. They say the ghost walks every time there's a new arrival. So welcome to Masked Mountain, the happy haunting ground. At Masked Mountain Inn, I learned I was supposed to track down a ghost that was dampening the winter sports enthusiasm. In spite of Justin's predictions, there were no spirit manifestations during the night. I woke up early, had a big breakfast, and by 10 o'clock was riding the ski lift uh, without skis. Seen from the summit, the jump was even more terrifying than from the valley road. Verton, the instructor, watched me eyeing it. Something bothers you, yes? Not me. I just came up for the ride. So every novice says. Do not worry. Soon I will have you make the slalom the double Christiana. But for today, all you need to learn is confidence. Sit down. Contemplate the beautiful scene. I go to instruct those Dumkovs, the Hancock boys. Just like that, he was gone, swooping down, down into space. I sat back and watched. It was a beautiful scene. I saw Hans with his two Dartmouth boys, dressed in noisy plaids. I saw the McIntyres in outfits of brilliant hunter's green. And soon they were joined by two other figures in red, Tom Justin and my client Madden. I watched them until I got dizzy. I had snow blindness and sunburn. I closed my eyes. When I opened them a few seconds later, all the figures had disappeared. All but one, in red. Hey! You out there! Oh, the I got no answer. The figure didn't move. I got up, walked to the jump off. It, it was a long way down. I went back, pulled the lift rope. But nothing happened. The lift chair was anchored securely at the bottom of the carry. Okay, so I'd go down the hard way. Carefully, I worked my way down the framework of the jump to the long runway. And that was my mistake. I tried to walk down. Oh. When I landed at the bottom, I was carrying a ton of snow. I tried to stand up, but my left ankle buckled under. I yelled, and this time I got results. I'll be all right. See what's the matter with the fellow back up there. It's either Justin or Madden. It was Madden. Dead. With a knife in his chest. There was no ghost on Masked Mountain. What I was after was a murderer. 
But I couldn't do anything about it until Ann Cortez, the nurse, had bound my ankle and I was able to hobble around. Miss Cortez was calm and efficient. She told me I'd done no serious damage to my foot, but that I should keep off it as much as possible. And she let me have visitors. I drew a full house. You okay, Mr. Browning? You sure? Sure, Hancock. I'm okay. I grinned at him and his brother. And then... Now, what about Madden's death? McIntyre answered that one. He was stabbed, all right. Browning, I don't know about you with that bum ankle, but my wife and I are clearing out of here. Oh, no, you don't. Nobody leaves here. Give me the phone. I put in a call for the sheriff. And while we waited for him to arrive, I got their stories and alibis. They all had them. Only none of them could be positively verified. The Hancock boys. My brother and I got separated, but each of us was working on some new turns. We can prove that by Hans. He'll tell you we've improved since last time. Hans checked that, told me he'd left the boys to work with the McIntyres. The McIntyres told me they were following Justin. Stop it! Forget about yourselves! Did any of you notice anything unusual about anyone else? The answer I got to that was stony silence. I tried another tack. Do any of you know why Madden was killed? That at least got a response. What it sifted down to was that it was the work of the ghost of Mast Mountain. Don't give me that. The ghost business is nothing but a lot of nonsense. Probably cooked up long ago to add local color. As I said it, something clicked in my mind. Now, wait a minute. You all agree that you saw nothing unusual out there around the time Madden was killed? They nodded vigorously. Okay. That means the killer wasn't seen. And I know why. I stood up, tottered forward. Miss Cortez rushed to help me. I leaned heavily on her arms, continued to hobble toward the door. The killer was in perfect disguise. A white uniform and platinum hair against the whiteness of the snow. Don't try to get away, Miss Cortez. You got a date with the sheriff. She fought, she kicked and struggled, but it was no use. And finally, she confessed. It was her family Madden had bought Mast Mountain from. She started all the ghost rumors hoping to discourage business at the inn so that Madden would be forced to sell. Cheap. She'd started out that morning intending to cut the ropes that guide the tow cables, only Madden caught her at it and paid with his life. Well, she paid for that when the jury handed in its verdict. Like I said, somebody's always ready to take you over the jumps. But justice is generally waiting at the final hurdle. 